Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Just want to do something different today. Can you all get up? And just move around and go and meet somebody whom you probably have been talked to for some time. We have one minute for this. Get out of your seat and just move and meet somebody maybe you don't know. Just talk to that person, get to know him or her. I'm watching the time, so it will not take too much time, so, but yet it's important. Okay, another 30 seconds. Okay, back to your seats. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for your goodness in our lives. And Lord, it is true you have been good to each one of us. There is none here who hasn't received and tasted of the goodness of God. Lord, it's our desire that you speak to us today, that we will hear your word, and Lord, that none of me, nothing in me will obstruct your word, word from reaching your people, whom you love so dearly. In Jesus' name we pray. <coughs> Amen. So, I was here on the 23rd of January, and I don't know whether any of you remember what I was speaking on. So this new theme for us, for me, and so what I'll be sharing with you all whenever I have the uh, opportunity, it will be on the theme of worship. And we looked at this thing about <laughs> worship, is not just what we do in the church on Sunday and for half an hour, and as we were beautifully led this morning. That's one aspect, but God wants us to lead a life of worship. And in that, we looked at the first time in the Bible the word worship comes, and it is in Genesis chapter 22, and it is in relation to the testing that Abraham went through. And uh, we read that portion, and we looked at just that I said there are four aspects that we can learn from that, that incidence on worship, on a life of worship. And the first one we looked at is the fact that we need to be people who will be listening 
to God. So we looked at that. Of course, you can go into that a lot more, but we, will clo we looked at that and we said listening is different from hearing. You know, we can hear a lot of things, a lot of noises around, but we listen to certain things. And we need to tune our ears to listen, and listening takes time. So I had given an exercise for each of you to do. I don't know whether you remember that. That was to see each of us increase in some way the time that we spend in listening to God. Whatever time you are spending now, can you increase it, stretch it a bit? And also, when God speaks to you, can you write it down? How many of you have done it? <laughs> no need to show your hands, but have you been, have you taken an effort to increase your listening to God. So in, in terms of life of worship, that is the key. Because we started with saying, God tested Abraham and he said to him, Abraham. And immediately the reply came, here I am. So Abraham was able to hear and listen to God. And so important it is for us to, to make an effort to be able to listen to God. And today, the second aspect is when Abraham heard, what did he do? So the second thing is obedience. A life of worship will be a life where we listen to God and we obey Him. But before I go into that, this morning as I was preparing, as I was praying and I was uh, not sure, what is it that the church needs to hear from God? Now, I have a theme and I can speak something, but I was asking God, what does the people need to hear from you? And what is it that you want to speak to them? And uh, suddenly this thing came to my mind. There are times in our life when we need a comfort, comforting word. And so, I was reminded of this verse from Isaiah chapter 40. This is a little different from my message. I don't know whether I'll get to it at all, but God, the God of the whole universe, God wants you to know that he loves you. Very simple. But sometimes we forget that. And even as I speak on worship and obedience and all those things, sometimes you may go with a burden in your heart. And maybe this morning you are sitting here already as I am beginning to speak, you might be burdened in your heart. And uh, God wants you to know that he's a God of comfort and he wants to comfort you. As I was praying, I was thinking of this thing that if I get a phone call, or if one of you get a phone call, let me take Julius. Julius gets a phone call from Sheikh Mohammed, and he says, Julius, I know you, and uh, I want you to come to the office. I have a job for you. 
you are special how would julius feel oh he would be so excited you would know what to do and that is exactly what not sheikh mohammed but the god of the whole universe is tell is doing hallelujah and that is what he is telling maybe i can take julius's name again that's what god is telling julius this morning and that's exactly what god is calling people sitting here by name you know in this world there are billions of people we are one among them they say it will be soon it will be 8 billion we are a number nobody knows us but god knows us hallelujah and he calls us by name and he loves us with an everlasting love so this morning as you sit here let no condemnation come upon you hallelujah can you just raise your hands and say hallelujah because we are not under condemnation hallelujah we can come with confidence before this god who loves us let me go on a bit on this isaiah chapter 40 verses 1 and 2 verses 1 and 2 maybe we can read some of these verses together this is something which i had not uh, planned but i think there is a need for this comfort comfort my people says your god hallelujah speak tenderly to jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed that her sin has been paid for that she has received from the lord's hand double for all her sins her sins have been paid for hallelujah this is a mystery i cannot understand nor can i explain why jesus christ as we have been looking at christology the very god of very god should come down and die for me and my sins have been forgiven there are so many people in this world who are much better than me much smarter than me probably much more righteous than me i can't explain this but this is the truth i can't explain how when i pick up when somebody when my son from australia dials on his phone few numbers my phone rings and i can pick up and i can talk to him i can even see him do i understand this no i don't understand i don't know the physics or the technology or anything i know it works i remember when i was a first year medical student i had come from kerala we never had television there and they said my friends who came from delhi said oh we have tv and then prime minister indira gandhi speaks and we can sit at home and see her and hear her i said come on this is not possible how can it be how can she sit in her office and speak and you can hear at home you can see her at home how you know, hearing radio i can understand but television what is this i don't understand but that is true and that is true of god's love for you and for me we don't understand we cannot explain but that is true chapter 2 in isaiah chapter verse 11 it says he tends his flock like a shepherd he gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart hallelujah you know he carries me close close those that, that have young you don't necessarily have to keep your eyes open i will not wonder whether you are sleeping or not but these are truths which we need to just receive into our spirit 
the fact that God tends us just like a shepherd. Just imagine he gathers the lambs in his arms. Just imagine God carrying you in his mighty arms. And he keeps you close to his heart. Hallelujah. And gently leads those that have young. And verse 29 says, he gives strength to the weary. How many of you are feeling weary this morning? Maybe worried about something, maybe the burden of work, maybe the boss who sits on your head, or maybe something of your own sin that is burdening you and pushing you down. And it says, God gives strength to the weary. Just receive the strength from God this morning and rise up in your spirit. Tell the devil he has no authority over your life. You we are not going to lie down there, but you are going to rise up. And it says, God increases the power of the weak. Hallelujah. You know, Paul says, when I am weak, then I am strong. Hallelujah. Any of you feeling weak this morning? Just tell when I am weak, then I am strong. Hallelujah. This is the word of the Lord. This is the truth. This is to be believed. This is to be trusted. This is to be acted on. Because this is reality. In my weakness, I know I have strength. Hallelujah. Let me move on to chapter 41, verse 13 and 14. It says, For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand. And he says to you, do not fear. I will help you. Hallelujah. You know, think of somebody who, who can help you. Who is it that can help you in your situation? No, in the natural sense, think of who can help you when you are in need. Who can, who can come to your help? Who you think can you know, help you out in the situation? And just think, how great is God who says he will help you. Hallelujah. Do not be afraid, O worm Jacob, O little Israel, for I myself will help you, declares the Lord. Have you felt like a worm any time? Somebody has said something about you and you just feel like shrinking into and disappearing. And that's when you feel like a worm. And oh, little Israel, you know, the smallest, nobody cares, nobody even notices and God says, I will help you. Hallelujah. Let me go to chapter 43, verses 1, verses, um, yeah, verses 1 and 2 says, But now this is what the Lord says, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. Hallelujah. Redemption is such a thing. You know what redemption is? Redemption is that you are in jail, you have been found guilty, you are in jail, you need to receive the punishment, and then somebody comes and takes you out, and you are free. Hallelujah. You know, there are so many people who have been in jail in, in this nation. Many of them not because of anything they have done wickedly, but because of the situation and circumstances. And if you are in jail and there is a, you know, there is a blood money of 100,000 dirhams and there is no way you can get 100,000 dirhams, 
you are a laborer or you are a driver working for 2,000, 3,000 dirhams a month and you have your family to support, your four children in school or college or whatever it is, and then someone comes and say, face the 100,000 dirhams and takes your hallelujah. That is redemption. And God says, I have redeemed you, O Israel. I have redeemed you in the place of Israel, put your name. And God says, I have redeemed you. And now nobody can put you back in jail. The police can come. Your case is closed forever. Hallelujah. And then when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. I am the Lord, your God. Hallelujah. I don't know anyone passing through the waters this morning as you sit here. And as though the rivers will overflow you, you are almost unable to swim and you are probably going down under the water. And God says, no. I will say stop and the rivers will stop and the water will stop. Hallelujah. And some of you may be in fire, walking through fire. And God says, you will not be burned. You will see the flames, but you will not be burned. Hallelujah. Because I have realized in order to be able to worship God in truth and in spirit, we need to understand these truths. Once we know these truths and they are sunk inside, meaningfully in our lives, then our worship will be in truth and in spirit. Otherwise, we could be doing so many things as rituals, and anything that we do, maybe we begin to do it meaningfully, then it becomes easy and ritual. I remember as a medical student, you know, nobody used to raise hands. You know, we used to sit and sing and all. Nobody used to clap hands or, or raise hands in worship. So if I felt uh, moved to raise my hands, you know, I used to feel really spiritual that day. <laughs> but then you do it every time, then you lose the, you know, you become sir. But knowing these truths, and those truths coming up in your spirit, and then it is in the top, then you can worship. Then you can live a life of worship. Uh, <clears throat> let me just go to 46.4, Isaiah 46, verse 4. This is for those of us who have got a lot of gray hair. It says, even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he. I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you. I will rescue you. Now, how many words does God has to tell you again and again? He says, I am he who will sustain you. I have made you, I will carry you, I will sustain you, I will rescue you. You know, as you grow older, insecurities become more because so many people of your age have got so many diseases and so many have passed away, some things have happened with corona, so many people, older age group. And your sturdiness of your wreath goes up and you get more easily anxious or more you are e likely to get anxious more easily than when you are young and that's why God says even to your old age and gray hairs 
So God is taking care of you right from your little child to your old age and to your gray hairs. 49.15, it says, Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Very, 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 very unlikely. I know we get news of some things like this happening, but out of a billion or four or five billion people, women on the face of the earth, there may be one or two or three who might do it. But it is so unlikely. But God says, even if that happens, even though she may forget, I will not forget you. So God is saying this is 100% guarantee. You know, so many things, so many things people ask, uh, you know, when, about, when you talk about a procedure or anything, doctor, is there any risk? Any medicine? Is there any side effect? And there is nothing without side effect. 100%? Are you sure? There is nothing 100% sure about anything. So sometimes people ask me, you know, doctor, 100% you are sure? So I will have to tell them 100% there is no sure because when you left your home and you came to see me, will you, were you 100% sure you will reach me? No. But here, for this, there is 100%. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> now having understood these truths, Let's go back to Genesis 22. Now we know that Abraham is a friend of God. We know that Abraham knew that he was loved and he was chosen. We also know that he was chosen from among all the people who were there on the earth face of the earth at that time. So he was loved, he was special. And he heard God telling him something. And what did he do when he heard God telling him to do something? Has God told you something? You know that God has told me to do. And you have been waiting for the right time. You have been waiting for confirmation whether I should do it or not. You have been kind of thinking what are the pros and cons of if I take that, if I do that. And then you are wondering, did God really speak to me or is it my imagination? For Abraham, there was nothing like that. It says, verse 2 says, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. And it says, verse 3, early the next morning, Abraham got up and saddled his donkey. Now this is a key thing in obeying God. What I understood as I was meditating on this, thinking about this, the more I prolong obedience, the greater the chance of disobedience. They say, if you have an idea, I think it's Bill Gates who said, if you have an idea and you don't act on it for the next 48 hours, there is very little chance of you ever acting on it. And if you don't do anything for one week, 
almost 99% that will never happen. So, if the Lord is speaking that you need to repent and turn to me, and you don't act on it at that opportunity, of course God is a God of second chances and third chances, no doubt about it. But there is a good chance that you may miss that opportunity. The next time that opportunity may not come, or when it comes, you may have already hardened your heart. I know about the true story of two, two people who were drunk, almost drunk, got out of their pub in Kerala, and then there was a um, convention or gospel meeting going on, and they saw people sitting there, so they also went and joined at the back, and they sat at the back, both of them. But after some time, the message went on, the worship went on, the message went on. At the end of the message, when there was an altar call, one of them got up and went in front and received Christ, and his life was transformed. The other person, they were good friends, they came out of the same uh, pub. He sat there, he didn't go to the friend, and his life continued. The next day he was still back, and the third day he was still back, and then he ruined his life. So there is an opportunity to obey God, and it's important that we take that opportunity when we hear the voice of God. Now, I don't know whether there is anybody here among us, very unlikely, who has not yet received Christ into his life, has not taken that choice of one-time choice of repenting and surrendering your life to Christ. And if that, anybody here this morning, don't miss this opportunity. Obey immediately. And you can ask, before you leave this hall, ask help from somebody and receive Christ into your life. The, here we see Abraham very next morning he taking his donkey and making all the preparation. It says he took with him two servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about, so he gets up in the morning, he arranges for his servants, calls his servants, gets the donkey ready, he cuts the wood, burnt offering. So step by step, taking action in our lives. But begin with the first step. If something God has burdened you with, maybe you need to speak to somebody about the Lord, Maybe God has put somebody in your mind whom you need to share the gospel with. Maybe you need to do something in your flat, in your, in your uh, building, or in your community, or in your workplace, whatever it be. Or maybe somebody who far away God wants, you want to get involved with that person's ministry. Whatever it be that the Lord has told you or maybe is speaking to you right now, take the first step without much delay. As you take the first step, then the other things will follow. You know, obedience to God is something which is so precious to him. You know, how uh, God knows I love him is by the way I obey him. Because Jesus said, anyone who loves me, John chapter 14, verse 24, he says, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. We know that in 1 Samuel 15, verse 22, God says, you know, obedience is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. So as, a, as we lead a life of worship, obedience is so vital. When God gave the laws, 
as I'm reading Leviticus these days, you know, so many regulations, how it is to be done, every, every detail was given, and it says they did exactly as most God had instructed Moses to do. And in our lives, sometimes we find why God gave these instructions. Sometimes people read, you know, why did God ask Abraham to sacrifice Isaac? Now, God gives you instructions, gives me instructions to do. Sometimes it may look very difficult, but God, we know, that's what I read in the beginning, is a loving God. And in everything that he does, he does out of love. Every prom he wants to promote you, he will give you a test so that he can promote you. Abraham was to be the person through whom all the people on the earth is to be blessed. And so God tested him so that God could promote him to that place. And today, billions, more than half the population on the earth call Abraham their father. And so when you are, whatever you are going through right now, it's permitted, allowed, planned by a loving God, just know that it is for your good. I was reading in the Everyday Bible, Bible in one year, just recently, and Nicky Gamble, he mentions about an incident when he was, uh, years ago when his children were small, um, they had a football match in the community. And uh, so he went with his uh, boys to, for the match, for all the children were there, all the children of the same age were there, they were all ready to play. But the coach, who, the football coach hadn't turned up. He was supposed to come, but he didn't come. So the children were getting restless, it was probably getting late, they all had come excited to play, so they wanted to play. So they asked, uncle, you be our coach, you be the referee, let's start playing the game. And he was forced into it, so they all started playing. There was one group there, one group this side, and he didn't know the rules of the game. And so the children were began to play, so then they said, oh, this is out. And one, one, one group said, no, this is across the line. They said, no, another group said, no, 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 it has not crossed the line. Then there was foul, and one fellow cried, oh, this is foul. And the other fellow, no, 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 this is not foul. So there was uh, commotion in the football ground. Because Nicky Gamble did not know the rules of the game. He had not marked the borders correctly. And boys were getting hurt because they were f there was foul. And then he was sweating. He didn't know what to do. And then suddenly the coach turns up. And then he turns up and he has got a loud whistle. He blows the whistle, and he divides the team, sets the rules of the game, and then everybody played nicely. Now, when God has given us the laws and commandments to follow, it is not for us to be harmed. It is for us to play the game well, so that everyone can be happy. So when God has in your life today, has put a situation which is difficult, which is unpleasant, uh, maybe your friends or relatives may be saying, oh, he says he follows God, then look at what happened. You know, people around could have, in, in Abraham's story, people around could have said, see, God, Abraham is asking you to sacrifice his own son. But God, is setting things around in your own life so that he can promote you to the level he wants you to. God talks about the wise and the foolish builders. You know, the foolish builders are the ones who hear everything, but then they go and then don't act on it. But the wise are the ones who hear and obey. 
what God has told us to obey. What are the commandments that Jesus has given us? Two commandments, or quite three commandments. Love your Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And then Jesus also said, A new commandment I give unto you in John 13, 34. How? Love even as I have loved you. So you must love. Now this is not something which we can achieve by our own. We all fall so many times. But this is the standard that God has kept for us. So we can grow each day, growing in it. Hallelujah. Growing in obedience to God. In obeying, in loving him, in loving our neighbor, and even to love like Jesus has loved. And I, standing here today, I know I don't love anyone on the face of the earth as he has loved me. Because his love for me is so beyond what I can imagine. And then in Matthew 28, again connected with our theme, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Make disciples of all nations, teaching them all that I have taught you. And I will be with you always, even to the end of the world. So as we look at these commandments that God has given us, and knowing how much he loves us, let us see one step that we can take. Looking at the three commandments I told you. Love the Lord. How can I love the Lord? What step can I take to love him more? Loving our neighbor, what step can I take in loving my neighbor? What step can I take in sharing the gospel to all the creatures, to all the nations? What can I do? Can I pray for a district, a taluk, for a people group, for a nation, for salvation to come? Can I do something, invest in some way? Can I take time, maybe one evening a month, to pray for something specific in terms of evangelizing the world, discipling the nations, Obedience is a way we worship this God who loves us. Before I close, before we close this morning, as the Lord uh, reminded of this thing, that there are people here who have come today uh, who need comfort. Uh, and who need in a special way to know the love of God in their lives. I just want to use a little time uh, for God to touch those special people in need. So as we close our eyes and begin to pray, Hallelujah.
there's anyone here this morning who has uh, who has a need <clears throat> and you're looking you have been looking desperately and you have cried out to the lord and you haven't heard we haven't seen the answer and as the lord gives you the faith to know that he loves you this morning i want you to just stand up wherever you are just by faith in god don't have to look at anybody else don't stand because anybody else is standing but you look to god as the word of god has come this morning to comfort you today hallelujah just want you to know that you are not standing in front of anybody here you are standing in the presence of god and i believe the lord god will minister to you hallelujah father i pray in the name of jesus Thank you Lord for the revelation that you have given us you have revealed to us your heart this morning that you are a loving God and Lord God that you are complete fullness of love and Father I pray this morning that your word that has come which is spirit and life Lord will breathe life into these people who have expressed their need of you and have stood up in faith looking to you oh God I pray in Jesus name in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth in the powerful name of Jesus lord let healing come let restoration come let revelation come and lord let the power of god work in the situation let joy come in the midst of agony and frustration and suffering let pain go in Jesus name and let healing come let healing flow receive the healing in jesus name in jesus name in jesus name hallelujah thank you jesus as you remain standing and as the lord is ministering to each one of us If there is anybody here who need prayer for healing deliverance breakthrough in the workplace maybe stressed out and this word has come so powerfully that the lord is with you always the lord will stand with you and give you strength he is standing like a champion and will fight your battles Thank you God for your for your words promises which are yes and amen in me. We give you glory and honor. Thank you God that you are healed many of us. Thank you God that you are already working breakthroughs in many of our lives. 
situations that look impossible lord you are going to make things better for us for you are our god you will be with us always thank you for listening to our prayer in jesus name we pray amen can we just all arise in god's presence and with go with benediction now may the love of god grace and mercy of jesus sweet fellowship of the holy spirit give us comfort and assurance that all the promises of god are yes and amen and amen in jesus name we pray amen and amen church have a wonderful week ahead god bless you